This is gold, Mr. Bond. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. That was 1964. Six decades later, what was once fiction is now a reality in national defense systems. In July 2024, the US military reportedly used a high-energy laser to disable a drone over the Pacific, marking one of the most high-profile real-world deployments of directed energy weapons. Yes, the same laser you've seen at factories and hospitals to shopping counters and even music stages is now being used as a weapon in wars. But how exactly is it done? And why are militaries across the world racing to develop them? Let's understand. What are directed energy weapons? Directed energy weapons or DEWs are systems that use focused energy in the form of lasers, microwaves or particle beams to damage, disable or destroy enemy equipment or personnel. Unlike conventional projectiles, they operate at the speed of light and can take down threats with pinpoint accuracy. You might think using light as a weapon is a modern idea, but the concept actually dates back over 2000 years to the legendary mathematician Archimedes. According to ancient accounts, Archimedes used mirrors, possibly arranged as a giant parabolic reflector, to focus sunlight onto enemy Roman ships, attacking Syracuse, causing them to catch fire. It's famously known as the Archimedes heat ray. Now, let's look into the types of DWs. Two types of DWs dominate current defense research and deployment. High energy lasers or the HELs. These systems emit a tightly focused beam of light capable of burning through sensors, optical systems, and even structural elements of aircraft and drones. The destructive potential lies in the energy density. The more energy delivered per unit area, the greater is the damage. Notable examples are Israel's iron beam designed to intercept rockets and drones. This ground-based system can destroy incoming threats in mid-air within seconds. U.S. Navy's Laser Weapon System, or LAWS. Installed aboard the USS Pons, it has successfully neutralized drones and small boats during live trials in the Persian Gulf. India's Aditya and Durga 2. Developed by DRDO, these are in testing phases and aim to provide short-range air defense against UAVs and other aerial targets. High-powered microwaves, or HPMs. Rather than physical destruction, HPM weapons target the electronic circuits within the systems. A high-intensity microwave pulse can disable radars, communication networks, or unmanned systems without causing visible structural harm, making them especially valuable for disabling swarms of electronic targets. Example, US CHAMP, counter-electronics high-power microwave advanced missile project. Developed by Boeing and the US Air Force, CHAMP can fly over enemy installations and disable electronics using a targeted microwave burst. In a 2012 test, it took out the electronics in a building without harming the structure. China's Poly WB-1, a ground-based HPM system unveiled at Defense Expos designed to counter drones and low-altitude threats through electromagnetic disruption. Now, why are directed energy weapons gaining attention? The growing interest stems from key factors. First is the speed of engagement. Unlike missiles or bullets, DAWs operate at the speed of light. This allows for near instantaneous targeting, making them ideal for intercepting fast-moving threats like drones, rockets or artillery shells. Second, low cost per shot. Traditional missiles can cost millions per launch. In contrast, a single DEW shot may cost as little as a few rupees in electricity. Yes, according to the UK Ministry of Defence, cost per shot of laser-based DEWs like the UK's Dragonfire is estimated to be less than 10 euros, which is about just 1000 rupees. Third, stealth and precision. DEWs are silent, invisible and leave no debris stray. Their lack of kinetic signature makes them difficult to detect, trace or intercept. A major advantage in both offensive and defensive scenarios. Fourth, 
counter to emerging threats. The rise of small drones, loitering munitions and hypersonic weapons has created new challenges that traditional air defense systems struggle to handle. DEWs offer flexible, scalable responses against such non-traditional and asymmetric threats. Until recently, DEWs were confined largely to defense labs and military prototypes. But in the past few years, they have begun making their way into real combat scenarios. Where does India stand? At the heart of India's DEW efforts is the Defence Research and Development Organisation DRDO, particularly its Centre for High Energy Systems and Sciences, that is CHESS. It is based in Hyderabad. Over the last decade, CHESS has been actively involved in developing both high energy laser, that is HEL, and high power microwave, that is HPM technologies. In April 2025, DRDO achieved a major breakthrough with the successful trial of the MK-2A laser-directed energy weapon system capable of disabling missiles, drones and smaller projectiles with high precision. Two other notable initiatives in this domain are Project Aditya, a 10 kW truck-mounted laser platform for close-range defense, particularly against UAVs and missiles. Second. Durga 2, Directionally Unrestricted Ray Gun Array Still under development, Durga 2 aims to scale up India's DEW capabilities for battlefield use. It is reportedly designed for deployment on naval warships and ground-based air defence units. Along with the promise also come formidable challenges like high power requirements, especially in mobile fields or aboard ships. Atmospheric interference like rain, fog, dust or smoke can scatter or absorb energy beams, reducing their effectiveness. They demand high precision targeting and cooling systems. Yet, these are technical barriers solvable with time and investment. The more pressing questions lie elsewhere. While directed energy weapons are being hailed as the future of combat, their deployment raises several legal and ethical questions. Are they compatible with international humanitarian law? The laws of armed conflict rest on three core principles – distinction, proportionality and unnecessary suffering. DEWs, especially those that disable rather than destroy, may offer better compliance on paper. But their invisible, silent mode of action also makes verification and accountability difficult. For instance, how do you confirm that a state used a high-powered microwave to disable satellites or blind sensors without leaving a trace? In 1995, the United Nations Protocol 4 to the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons explicitly banned laser weapons designed to cause permanent blindness to the human eye. Most countries, including India, are signatories. High-powered microwave or HPM weapons can disable electronics across a wide radius. In urban warfare, this means they could potentially knock out hospitals, power grids or water supply systems even if unintentionally. This raises serious ethical concerns, especially under the Geneva Conventions. Many DAWs are now being paired with AI-based detection and tracking systems. In the near future, autonomous DAWs could be programmed to engage without human interventions. But who is responsible if such a system misfires? If a high-energy laser disables a civilian aircraft avionics, is the liability with the commander, the technician, the software designer or the state? As India joins a select group of nations advancing DEW capabilities, the coming years will be crucial, not just for mastering the science, but also for shaping the rules that govern their use.